Today is a good day to talk about leadership. What makes a good leader? What inspires you to follow someone? Good morning, I'm Pastor Tully here with my Wednesday morning message. You know, the other day I was looking through the internet and I came across this website that contained 101 verses, what the Bible says about leadership. I thought, eh, it's a good idea, let's, let's read through this list. Well, pretty quickly I realized that about a quarter of the list were duplicates uh, or, or really, really similar or, you know, like the Luke version of a story that's also told in Matthew. Um, half the list, they were good verses. They just weren't really about leadership specifically. I mean, John 3.16, the most famous verse in the world, it, it kind of applies to everyone. Yeah, you can apply it to leadership, but it's not specifically about leadership. So pretty quickly, I, I whittled this list down to about 20 or 30. Uh, some of the scriptures were better than others. There were some proverbs about what happens if you have a bad leader. Uh, there were some prophecies. Uh, there were some scriptures about the tasks and the things that leaders do, but not really the qualities of a leader. Uh, so I came up with my top 10 list of scriptures. The full list is in the description below. I invite you to read through it. Uh, but we're going to start today, we're going to talk about Moses in uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 21. I've got my Bible right here. Uh, now, this isn't the number one or the best verse in the Bible on leadership, but it is the first when you are reading through the Bible from beginning to end. Uh, and so what's going on here is that Moses, the people, of the Hebrew people, they've just crossed the Red Sea. We all know the story. Uh, they haven't yet gotten the Ten Commandments. Uh, and so what happens is they're there, they're wandering the wilderness, uh, and the very first two stories after they cross the Red Sea deal with food and water. How are they going to feed themselves? How are they going to stay hydrated? Uh, the third story deals with uh, safety and security. Uh, so basically, after they've gotten their, their basic needs taken care of, food, water, security, the very next thing they have to tackle on the list is leadership. So we have this really wonderful story. So what's happening is Moses is spending all day, every day, dealing with the people's issues. He sits in a tent or under a tree, uh, and the people come to him, and they, they tell him what's going on, and he makes a decision. He, he's kind of acting like a judge in the modern-day sense of a judge. Uh, and then he makes a decision, and he moves on to the next case. Well, his father-in-law, Jethro, comes to visit, finds out they've crossed the Red Sea. He's really happy for him. And Jethro's like, dude, you got to get yourself some help. And that's where we get verse 21. You will need to appoint from all the people some competent leaders who respect God and are trustworthy and honest. Then put them over groups of 10, 50, 100, and 1,000. You know, I just love this verse. Um, there's a lot of really good theology here. Um, keep in mind that this was written before the foundations of democracy were really in place. But yet we see this element of democracy because it says that you need to choose leaders from all the people. So, so everyone is represented. All the 12 tribes of Israel are represented. Uh, it says that the leaders need to be capable and, and able to do the job. Uh, it need, says that need, they need to respect God. Another way to say that is that they are God-fearing. It says that they need to be trustworthy. Uh, and it says that they need to be honest. Another translation of that last one, honest, is that they hate bribes. Which I love that translation because that's really what it takes to be a good leader. You need to be somebody who hates bribes. Who wants to do the right thing no matter what and doesn't want to be there out for their own personal gain. Um, a little side note on uh, gender here. Most of the scriptures uh, will use the word men in the way it's translated, but it could just easily be translated as human or, or humankind. Um, these stories took place more than 3,000 years ago. Uh, our understanding about gender has changed a lot since then, uh, and we in the Presbyterian Church really believe that leadership can and should include people of all genders. Um, I think that's it for today. Uh, I'll see you next week. Uh, let me know what you think about leadership, what makes a good leader, who inspires you to follow them, uh, and if you want to hear more scriptures about leadership.